Welcome back to The Extract. I'm Kyle Meyer. And, uh, jawohl, Achtung, attention kids. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get after this today. Thank you very much for your kind applause on my entrance. I always like a warm hand on my opening. Um, uh, you know, we, we don't have too many folks from Germany rolling in, and, and it really sucks because German wine is so near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I got to relay a quick story. Back when I first started getting in the wine business, back in the mid-80s, uh, I used to work at a gourmet grocery store. And there was a gourmet grocery store that sold a lot of California wine. I see. <laughs> but, you know, the buyer, the guy that I worked for, he was super knowledgeable, right? So on the shelf was like, you know, uh, uh, prune, uh, you know, these wines, uh, you know. Thank God. The, the best producers at the time in the mid-80s in Germany were on the shelf, right? And of course, we didn't sell a GD bottle of the stuff. Like nobody gave two <laughs> blinks about any of it. So I was able to buy, you know, back in 1986, you know, 50 cents in the dollar, 20 cents in the dollar. I was drinking, you know, 83 Dr. Spate, like $12 or something bullshit like that. But what it's it did, no, the, the point is, I was able, it was like starting at the top and knowing what great Riesling was before anybody else. <laughs> and, um, you know, I probably even knew what great <clears throat> Riesling was before Max Ferger. <laughs> I'm a little old. You think? Uh, actually, no, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Next to me, Max Farragut, winemaker. Um, are you doing all the vineyards and everything too? You're just all around super dude at this place? And, and I'm the girl for everything, to be honest. So okay. I'm, I'm in the cellar, I'm outside, I'm in the office. Uh, I'm taking care of everything. That's the plan. <laughs> the do-all at, uh, <laughs> at one of, not, not just one of the greatest wine estates in Germany, but in the world. Um, uh, Dr. H. Tanish Erben müller -Burgreff. Well what? done. <laughs> and um, so, so literally uh, in front of us is some of the greatest uh, white wine on the planet. And Max is responsible for that. Max, it is an absolute pleasure having you here today, sir. Um, I love it. It is an absolute treat. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, these, are, these wines, uh, amongst the wine cognizanti, these wines are, are so storied. I mean, you are, you are a custodian for, for one, of, one of the most famous plots of land on the planet. Absolutely. Um, How'd you end up there? Did you get lucky? Where you just you bought somebody a beer at the right time? Or like, what, <laughs> how, how, did, how did this work? How did you end up at one of the... Actually, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, I know, well, we all know that the wine business is uh, quite small. And uh, at that time, I was, uh, when I was in uh, university in Geismar, I'm studying viticulture and enology. And um, I was actually just at the end of my studies, and uh, I was working in Austria <clears throat> at the Neusiedlersee at Weingutschloss Halbturm. And, uh, Easy actually, for you to say. Uh, <laughs> okay, sorry. Did you call me? And uh, my plan was actually to stay there, but uh, then uh, at that time my girlfriend, now my wife, thank God she made it, and I did too. Um, she said this will not be the right or correct place to stay there. So mm -hmm. um, I asked a lot of my fellow students uh, in, uh, in university so if there would be a place to go somewhere else. And uh, I was always a Riesling lover and uh, fell a little bit in love with uh, Pinot as well. And uh, then a good friend of mine, he was really a good friend of my new bosses at that time, mm -hmm. and uh, he asked them, and uh, <clears throat> somehow uh, my, my boss, Barbara Runkus, she called me on the, I think on, on the 22nd of December. I was on a hunting trip with my dad, and she, she asked me if I would be, um, if, if it would be okay if I just come around and we would just have a talk together. And uh, while we met each other, we, we kind of fell in love together. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was just perfect. And uh, it, for me, it was the, the first real job, actually, to start after, um, after university. And um, it was a big risk for them, to mm -hmm. be honest. And uh, I didn't have anything to lose. So mm -hmm. I said, why not just give it a try? But this was in uh, 2008, and uh, now we have uh, 219. So I think we did quite well so far. Just fine. <laughs> All right, so check it out. You, you, uh, you're like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go make wine in one of the most yeah. just recent vineyards in the world. So you get there, and you describe to me the first time you were walking the renowned Baron Kessler Doctor Vineyard. Your first walk up and down the hill, and then what struck you first and foremost? Then, well, well, to be honest, uh, when when we were at university, when we did a lot of blind tasting sessions over there. Mm -hmm. There we had one Baron Kessler Doctor, and uh, I had many, many wines before. But uh, as soon as we got that one in the glass, I was just like amazed and everyone was just like, okay, this is not normal because it's, <laughs> right. it, it, it is not, it's something magic. And yeah. I mean, there's a huge long story behind the doctor vineyard. So um, <clears throat> whenever I did the decision to, to go to Tanish and uh, I went to this vineyard, it was, uh, it is magic. So mm. every time when, uh, when, when, when season pickers are there or internships from, uh, from other countries and, uh, and they step the first time into the doctor vineyard, 
they just they, they completely shut up, they calm down, uh, they just look around. <laughs> I mean, for sure, the view is fantastic, but yeah. it's, uh, and it's not even the steepest vineyard, but it mm. is something very, very special. You see those really, really old vines, and uh, it's indescribable. I mean, tec tec but technically, <coughs> what is it? I mean, if, if y'all just like broken it down like a guy's hammock kind of stuff, and the, the combination of different slate soils, et cetera, et cetera, produce something that makes yeah. the wine taste like this, or what, what, what are some of the... We, we can we can talk a minute on you know, the the technical aspects of the doctor. Okay, that, that, the so... magic or the special thing about the doctor itself is for sure it's the age of the doctor because it's really really old, so close to two hundred years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, the the vineyard is south southeast facing, which is for sure more than good, and a lot of really good vineyards have this as well, <clears throat> and. Uh, the really cool thing about the Dr. Vineyard as well is that uh, we have a combination between gray and blue slate, which gives you really special aromas and uh, mm. characters later on in the wine. And uh, a lot of people say, okay, the, the, it's really close to the Mosul and it's the, cities, uh, the city just uh, in front of uh, the, the Bernkastler Dr. Vineyard and uh, the, the slate roofs, which heats up the vineyard as well. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's a combination between everything right in between. But, um, the slate roofs of the town itself. Yes. Heating yes. the vineyard. Mm -hmm. Is so that terroir? <laughs> that is terroir, huh? I mean, think about it. It's a <clears throat> certain kind of terroir, definitely, absolutely. But how friggin' cool. I mean, <laughs> no, but that's the point. That's yeah. something that we uh, we don't think about. That, that no one does, but it's always nice to see, especially in wintertime when uh, when we got a little bit of snow and uh, you, you see all the other vineyard sites on the left and on the right, which are still covered with snow. The doctor is the only one which is completely melted. It's it's always like that, and it's, uh, I mean it's uh, it's a proof definitely. Mm. So when you see this, it's just like okay, what's happening over there? Mm. <clears throat> do do you handle the wine from this particular vineyard uh, different than because you know you guys own a parcel of, of top Grand Cru style vineyards and yeah yeah with the Grave and the Lie and and these and these sites. Does Doctor get handled any different than the other sites when you're when you're making the wine? Or is it <coughs> all kind of if it, not really actually no? because um, uh, due to that age, I mean that's the that's a real grown up. You know, if mm -hmm. it's really knowledgeable, that's what I always say. That's um, I treat my babies just like ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the older they get, the the lower the yield gets, but the more or the higher the knowledge will be. <clears throat> so um, the the grapes from the doctor are more resistant against any other uh, diseases, to be honest. So and, uh, what. What we do a lot is, uh, for sure, we have to do a lot of selection there in the vineyards, but the grapes are really small and tiny, but really golden, yellow, and uh, um, uh, physiological ripe. That's the most important thing for us. Mm. So um, what we basically do is um, we do a lot of selection outside in that vineyard. Uh, we, we do a long pressing time, so we start from 6 to 16 hours. Uh, we, we actually, we do it like the Romans. We, we select the grapes, we, we put them in huge green boxes. Um, I step on those grapes just to crack them off so the mm -hmm. juice runs out a little bit so the enzymes start to work already. Mm -hmm. Then we bring them to the cellar and then we put them on the, on the, on the press and that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Then we do a lot of racking later on so um, everything is sedimented naturally. So mm -hmm. uh, we do not add any enzymes to those wines. And, um, then we we just need some time. That's the most important thing. So mm. it's not in a rush, and it's not just like okay, we have to get through this quite fast. Mm. <clears throat> so. so can you drink a doctor wine? Well, we're drinking the hell out of this wine, young. <laughs> but but is is there a particular window? I, I think it might be surprising to some folks at home. You know what you know what the drinking window on a wine like a Baron Kessler Doctor Cabinet could be. I would say. Um, Nearly every predicate from the doctor, no matter if it's a Spätlese or Rauslese or a Cabernet, dry, sweet, mm. you should at least wait a year because the, the, the wine needs to calm down and needs to, I will not say recover, but uh, then it's starting to show its, uh, its whole potential. I mean, we're now having, or just had the 215, and I think it's still a bit close, but it's uh, already starting to show more than well. And um, mm -hmm. I like to decant those wines as well. So the more oxygen those wines receive, they, they even show better. And uh, they're not just like those three second wines, which are only built on their primary aromas. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and they're really juicy and fruit driven at the beginning. This is something really complex and uh, kicks ass, absolutely. Here, here in America, the tradition has always been for the fruitier predicate style wines, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know what what we like. It's kind of personally what I like still. Black Tower, the brilliantly distinct white wine, light, soft, with a golden burst of flavor from a happy mingling of grape and earth and sun. Black Tower, the imported white wine in the towering black bottle. I love drinking fruity recently, as I think the the little bit of RS is a conveyor of terroir, is a conveyor of flavor. Yeah. Um, 
are the vineyards in Barron Castle in this area, are they as comfortable making dry styles as they are fruity styles, or are some vineyards more suited uh, to dry or fruity style than others? Actually, it depends on, on the vineyard side as well. So uh -huh. the closer they are to the Mosul, the, the more moisture, the more botrytis there will be, and botrytis is not the really best thing to produce any dry wines out of that. So the higher the vineyards are, or the, the more far away from the water, it's, uh, it's better. So um, there's a small block in the, in the doctor part, where we um, I just chose the, the best grapes out of that to produce a GG out of that. <clears throat> Same thing with the Cabinet. Cabinet always, what well, means always, I usually start to pick Cabinet in the doctor from the bottom, mm -hmm. and then we have to wait. Sometimes we, we go up to six, seven, eight times into the doctor just for different qualities. Yeah, but this is necessary yeah. to, um, to point out the peaks yeah. Uh, to, to produce really, really good stuff out of this. and I mean, for sure, it would be way much more easier to pick everything at once, but this would be boring and too simple, to be honest. Well, from dry style to fruity style <coughs> up to the sweet wines, how, how long is a typical harvest? Are you, are you in there for like three <laughs> months, digging in there, like every week, this kind of stuff? This, uh, this is actually hard to tell. Sometimes uh, we have, uh, we call them blitz harvest. Mm -hmm. so it sounds a bit weird, I know, but... <laughs> But true. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> so um, we, we had harvests uh, within uh, three to four weeks, which was really, really fast. That's intense. Absolutely. Yeah. So, But in general, you can say like a hand-picked harvest. That's a thing you have to take care of. Mm. It usually takes up from, I would say, from four up to six, eight, maybe nine weeks, just in mm -hmm. general. So Because uh, you have to um, manage a lot of things, and uh, it depends on how, how large your group is of pickers. Mm -hmm. And um, Then, for sure, it always depends on the guy out there, right. what about the weather. So that's a thing we kind of predict. And um, sometimes we have to hurry up, and sometimes we can lean back and relax, just like the last vintage, which puts... One of the, the best vintages we had so far, it was insane. We had perfect weather. They, people were picking grapes with, uh, within their shorts and Bermudas. <laughs> and uh, we, we all thought, okay, there's something going wrong now. So uh, we will just wait. So maybe there's a hailstorm coming or a thunderstorm. Nothing is nothing. happening. Nothing. We were just like, all right. Well, I'm looking forward to tasting 2018. You will. All right. Dude, that was it. See, yeah. that? See how fast that is? Told you. You didn't believe me. <laughs> Guys. Max Berger, Dr. H. Tanish, <laughs> Urban Müller Burgraf, uh, one of the greatest wineries in the world and one of the top winemaking guys <laughs> in the planet. Uh, thank you so much for coming in today. It, it, it was a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. This was awesome. You crushed it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Check one, check one, check one. Baron Kessler, doctor. Uh, I have to practice my uh, Tanish, Urban Müller Burgraf. Yeah, uh, very close. good. Did say something about the sites. Say Bernkastler Badstube. Bernkastler Badstube. Very good. Bernkastler Graben. Very good. Bernkastler Lai. Very good. Ausle say Auslese. I'm Auslese. Here. Very good. Spätlese. I'm proud of him. He's, uh, he's okay. Kabinett. <laughs>